I don't think abortion is an option. That's how I believe, right? But I don't believe you can impose that on a woman. The fetus or the embryo is a very particular form of life because it's within another. And this within another, it's within a mother who has to be able to make decisions in her life as a full human being. So the right to personal freedom, the dignity of the person, the church has been defending that for centuries and sometimes alone in very difficult context. The human being has a dignity and in the words of the philosopher, Immanuel Kant would be, you cannot be, you can never be an instrument for somebody else. You cannot because that's against your dignity. The dignity of the human being, you are always an end to yourself. The human being is always an end to itself. It's never a means for something else. You cannot, that's called manipulating people, right? That's depersonalizing people. That's objectifying people. You don't do that. So here you have the very particular case of the woman, right? Because the woman who has and should enjoy all this respect in her dignity might find herself without even wanting it and even having fought against it with another life within. So that's a particular case. And one that you better let God and the woman sort it out and don't mingle with that. Because you cannot just play one fundamental principle, which is the dignity of human being, that is the mother, against the other fundamental principle, which is the sanctity of life, that is the child, right? You, you, what happens there when you have such a conflict? And for example, the example I gave to the church and to consideration was a father, right? If you have the father of a child that needs a kidney transplant, right? And that happens. This is not a imagine, imagine, imagined example. This is true people are there. And I also didn't come up with the example out of nowhere. I came out with this example out of a recent experience I had had in 2009 of a Jesuit who needed a kidney transplant. And he very happily told me that 11 of his brothers had gone to check whether they were compatible to give him the kidney, right? But I thought, how come only 11? There were 200 Jesuits. <laughs> how come only 11 did that to save his life, right? So that's what my example was. Is like, let's say it's a father that has a child and the child needs a kidney transplant to survive, right? And the father, is the church ready to force the father under punishment of imprisonment or excommunication to give the kidney to the child. The church is not. The Catholic church is saying to the father that is advisable that you give it or even not even that, but it's not, of course, making the father feel that the whole rage of God is going to fall upon him if he does not give uh, a little bit of his body, right? To save the life of his child, right? No, it's not doing it, the church. And it's not doing it with a reason, because if you go this way, you open the way of instrumentalization of the human being. And this is a disaster. If you open that way, you will start justifying all kind of what? Like, that's absurd, right? But you could even justify uh, giving organs to different people and taking them from other people. It's it's not in a scenario that, that is coherent and, and possible, right? So the church, the answer is no. The church does not force a father under threat of excommunication. And yet the danger for the father's life of that doing that, giving the kidney to his son or daughter would be much less than the danger of a woman in certain circumstances to carry a pregnancy. She might be risking her life. And we know that because I had studied it, right? The church in cases were like this child of nine years old in Brazil, right? That was pregnant after the stepfather raped her and some in the church pretended that she just well the church pretended that she carries on the pregnancy right and the doctor said this this girl is going to die or to be uh, heavily injured for life to carry out the pregnancy at age nine and so they did the abortion with the agreement of the mother right but some in the church pretended that this should have gone you are risking the life of this child because of this principle of the sanctity of the other life, that why don't you ask the fathers then to be able to do that if they need to do? Well, the official answer, I know it, it's 
Well, in this case, they are so intimate together and they go on at length with that. So my answer is, okay, if they are so intimate together in such a peculiar case, which I agree it is, the mother and the child, then let God and the mother sort that out and stay away. 